but uh, I, I always don't. So, um, there, you getting me live? All right, I'm just waiting for this to come up. I'm going to look kind of crazy as I wait for this to, to go live. All right. Um, I see the chat. <laughs> I'm always very confused by this. Um, let me see what's going on. There I am. Okay, good. It will. That takes a while for me to get to get online. That's interesting. Okay, we're live, everyone. How's it going? Uh, thanks for joining me today. I am here with my good friend Keith Williams. Is going to be up in a couple minutes, and we're going to talk about what, how much amp do you need, right? How much? How big is too big? And uh, it's a big kind of conversation I have with a bunch of friends, and we're going to continue talking about this. Uh, I got David Grissom coming on with this, and Matt Schofield. We're going to talk about amps and volume and things like that. But I wanted to get uh, start off with Keith, because Keith has got a cool live stream tomorrow as well, talking to about a similar sort of subject with uh, the amazing um, Sean Tubbs on guitar. So first thing, uh, thank you, BV, for being here today. And this weekend on Saturday, that would be July 30th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I am doing a live Zoom workshop masterclass on mixing major and minor pentatonic scales. And if you use the link that is down below, uh, that is going to be 25% off. And a lot of people have joined on. So I'm um, really hoping you guys uh, sign up for that masterclass. It'll be a ton of fun. I may or may not be doing one any masterclass in August. We're going to see. I might try to take some time off if I can or or not. I don't know. Y you guys are all signed up to the mailing list. If not, please sign up to my mailing list or join. Even better yet, go over to JM Guitar Lessons. you got the YouTube freebies. You just sign up. You'll get all sorts of announcements and everything like that. And um, so, yeah, that would be going on. Yep, Michael Burrell's got his ticket already. Uh, what's going on, everyone? All right, so sorry about the, the clunky intro. That I'm using a third-party app, which is great, but it takes a second for it to kind of register on YouTube, and I don't even know when I'm live, and I'm talking, and then suddenly it comes up in the middle of the sentence, so it is what it is. All right, so I'm going to bring to center stage, or stage right, my good friend Keith Williams. You all know Keith from 5 Watt World. Here we go. There's Keith. What's up, stage man? Left, stage. Okay. Left, right. You're over there for me right now. <laughs> You're over there for me. Cool. So everybody knows Keith over at 5 Watt World, of course, and a lot of you guys know me through Keith. So um, this is the first time I've had Keith on my show. And we're always talking about this cool conversation of, you know, what wattage amplifiers. And, it, and if you go over to our other good friends that, of course, BB works with over the guys over at that pedal show. They were talking about this as well, especially when they did a nice cool uh, video on EV speakers and which amp sounds best with those. And, and, um, and uh, over the years, I've figured out kind of what wattage amplifiers I like versus you know, what's the right amp for the room, headroom, all these sorts of things like that. So first thing, let's say hi to Keith and we can just start talking. What's going on, man? Oh, you're ready for me now. I'm ready to talk to you. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> when, Jeff, when Jeff was working on the uh, the audio and he's working on that stuff in the background, I jumped on the chat and I said that Jeff took my guitar audio away. Um, I've been trying to figure this out. Like I'm I've got some sort of routing thing that when you started playing, everything got all murky still, and everything. I'm still a little like pouty that. about yeah, that. Yeah, a little bit. As as if I'm dying to play live after Jeff. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if people know this. Like in a jazz context, you if you, if you book the gig. If you're the guy mm -hmm. getting paid, then you call the tunes. Is this true in the blues as well? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, okay, so you you booked it. You booked the gig. You you, play, you call the tunes. You also decide the, the solo order. Mm -hmm. And so I have all these stories about like places where I I didn't get to choose the solo order, and then I found myself soloing after the guy in the band who always brings the house down. And you're right. kind of like, yeah, I'm just gonna play the melody and get out, you know? Like, yeah. You know, so that, that would be like me playing guitar on Jeff's channel. <laughs> <laughs> would be a little bit like that, so especially with that new guitar in his lap. All right, we can know. talk about that too. Yeah, my exactly. Guitar. He's got the he's got the full mojo. I've I got do. A guitar. I can hold a guitar if well, I you get got some nice guitars going on. I, I have some very nice guitars here. You yeah, do. I mean, as as my friend Jeff likes to say, I, I do it for a living. You do it for a living, right? Yeah. People like, oh, you got some nice guitars. Well, that's, is what I <laughs> right. do for a living. Yeah. Right. Or, or or my version of that is, I, I'm 62 years old. If I'm 
if I'm going to have nice guitars, when am I going to have them? Right. Right. Well, that, there's that too. There, not... there is that. There is that whole mortality, mortal coil thing. Yeah. Well, and so, if you're going to do it now, and right. you're not putting yourself in some sort of financial hazards, you know right. what I mean to do it. Yeah. Then yeah, I, I say because yeah. I love when people say like, oh, you know, I really, you know, I would love to get a guitar like that, and I'm like, well. This is another kind of fun conversation of like yeah. getting rid of all the junky guitars that you own. Right. I say junky. Like, so, you know, for me, let's say uh, some of the, the custom shop or the Murphy Lab, even the vintage guitars or something, all those are worth, say, my Murphy Lab, Les Paul, the gold top that you guys are familiar with. That's worth the guitars I traded or sold to get it. Like, if you throw two guitars that you were like on the fence about to get a guitar that you really love, Right. That's how I look at this whole game. And it's a game, and plus it's fun, right? You know, getting a new guitar is always fun, and it's exciting, and, and everything like that. So, And you see well, me the, floating the, around with these new guitars, and a lot of it comes from, as I've discussed, is like the sort of the, the buy, sell, and trade stuff thing, you right. know? Yeah, just swapping stuff out. John Cordy, you know, everybody's heard me talk about John. He's got a channel in England, and he keeps making videos about his getting rid of gas, and he keeps upping the number because he keeps selling stuff. So about yeah. six months ago, he did a video, you know, like I sold 25,000 pounds worth of stuff. I sold 30,000. Today's video was I sold 40,000 pounds worth yeah. of stuff. And he said on the video today, he's like, yeah, it was mostly pedals. Mostly pedals. That's a lot of pedals. It's a lot of pedals. Well, I told <laughs> you, I traded, of... I traded a whole bunch of pedals for that. I had that Guthrie Govan Charvel. Now, I right. would say that I no longer have that. That it, It's a great, great guitar. If anybody wants like a shredder guitar, that was top notch. Like thing was amazing. The only reason why I, I traded it um, in part for this, and also is uh, the main main reason, as I discussed with you, is my my hand. Uh, the neck was right. thinner. A beautiful feeling neck. Like really really great. I was like felt awesome. Yep. Uh, not as thin as maybe the Jakey e. Lee guitar that I kept. I kept that because you know it's inexpensive and it's Jakey e. Lee. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would play it for like an hour, and then my hand would start killing me. It's like, Echo on the live stream. How bad is that? Yeah, fishy, fishy fish is saying there's an echo. How bad We're is it? I have like... to put headphones on Jeff. All right, I'm going to put headphones on. Let me tell him if that's the difference. Probably what it is. I'm going to, I'm going to show today. off my Hold fancy on. guitar in the meantime. Somebody, I put this right, guitar up on uh, Instagram. And people are like, I don't know why you'd put a, lip, a, a solid top on a wood library guitar. And so I was like, well, you need to look at the back to know why you'd put a wood library guitar up with a solid top. I'll hold the guitar just, you know, right. as a prop. I'll feel How more is that? Is secure. the echo gone? That's a beautiful guitar. I don't guitar. hear the echo now. Okay. It's a nice guitar. It's a DGT. It's David's fault. It's your fault it, by extension. It, it, it's my fault, I know. It's your fault because you got David on my show. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I had to admit out loud to David Grissom himself that I had sold my DGTs. So when this came in used at uh, at Ish Guitars at the local boutique store, the boys were like, "Hey, I heard you say this. We have one of those. You should get it." So <sighs> that you love, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I love uh, this bandwidth. It is okay. The echoes <laughs> on it seems like okay. There's no bandwidth issue. It's um, I think it's the the, the bounce back because I was going through monitors and if I'm yeah. using uh, hey, okay, there we go, back. Um, all right, so the, the, the main conversation, as opposed to our really cool guitar, sorry, cut your, let's talk about that guitar for a second. So what is that again, exactly? <laughs> you don't know about this? If we didn't lose yeah. everybody else that wanted to really show up, we talk about amps. This is a, a PRS yeah. DGT Wood Library guitar with a custom platinum run top. Um, but you can see that it has a really nice top, but it's got a maple, flame maple roasted neck and a crazy, really nice mahogany back. Um... And it has this DGT neck, as David's neck, and it's just, it and it has an oil finish, so it feels like there's no finish on it. And I'm actually working on a mm -hmm. short, excuse me, a short history of Eddie Van Halen's guitars, and of course right. his necks had nothing on them, just sweat, you know, the sweat finish. Um, so, so yeah, so I so I got this um, from the boys at Ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, man. Actually, around the same What's time, I, I I sold a bunch of amps, so. Um, it weighs uh, eight pounds exactly, which is exactly, this is David Speck. This is exactly, when I asked him so what, what his favorite years were, um, he said he loved the 2010s and then the brand new ones. Great. Um, they, they actually have tweaked the pickups because they ran out of the original wire. I, I could do an hour on this crap, so don't get me started. So um, okay. 
but David feels like the guitars have changed back. They have the new not the little knobs again. Um, mm -hmm. It's more like the original spec, except this one is a maple neck, which gives it a little more snap. So, yeah, cool. I'm very happy with it. It, uh, it haunts my sleep. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It, it's I love great my for DT testing team. big amps. So let's talk yeah. about that. Okay, so the uh, the amp question of today, um, and I was saying a little bit before I got all this technical stuff going on. Thanks, guys, for for bearing with us. It's it's really tough being the uh, the performer, the especially when you're doing a, a live stream where. I've got it, when it's just me, I've got it pretty nailed. But when you bring in somebody else, there's all these other variables that can suddenly come into play that make it like, it's like surfing, you know? <laughs> You're like, oh no, yeah. is it got to have a tight, tight rope today? All right, so um, one thing, I was having this discussion with, with Corey Congilio just uh, the other day, too, about the headroom and the size of amplifiers and what's too big for a gig, what's the right thing for a gig. So for me, one thing I've discovered um, the kind of amps that I like the most at this point in my life are like the two rock style, which would be kind of a bit more of that Dumble sort of school. And I heard Mick talking about this over in that pedal shows. I like a really high headroom amp now, like lots of clean headroom. Um, so that generally is going to be something that's a bit more higher wattage. So um, that's all relative what is higher wattage. So it comes down to clean headroom is what I'm looking for. So if we look at, say, the amps behind me, I've got my little, you can't, right there, I've got the combo, the studio, the studio signature. You should say, you should say the wattage as you go, because I'm already laughing, because you go, I got my little amp, Okay, little amp watts. at 35 watts. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, here's the thing. I've done gigs with like 18 watt amps. I can't do it. There's no headroom. Yeah. So let's just talk about that. So 18 watts, if you're in your house and you're plugged in, that is loud. You know, 18 oh. watts can be really, really loud. People are like, oh, you know, is that going to be loud enough? And uh, it was Jason Lachlan. He bought one of those 1984 X's, the Marshalls, which sound amazing. It's like a little mini blues breaker sounding thing. Amazing yeah. sounding amp. And um, I just said, yeah, until you get on a gig. He's like, no, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm, it's cranking loud. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I had one, <laughs> you know, and I did one gig with it. And I'm like, I got to get rid of this. Like, because, because you 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 topped out the compression and everything and it's just there's nothing there's no more there's, there's no more to go. anymore yeah right? so what well, and we were talking earlier today that that's a and and your world of gigging is very mm -hmm. different than because i was saying how you said um brett papa got one of the new 20 watt studio origins mm -hmm. uh, not origins uh, 20 watt studio marshals that are doing in england and people love those and i said yeah peter stroud uses two of those with cheryl crow one mm -hmm. for cleans and one for crunch and then he pushes it. And you said that Cheryl famously has very, very low volume on stage. Right. And you're talking about, you know, world-class level PA. That, that's not the city winery. That's yeah. not, you know, that's not a local gig where, no. you, where you do need that headroom. And the thing that was cracking me up was that Mick on that episode was talking about how um, he helped develop the lunchbox heads um, for, with Victory. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't use one in his wet dry rig because he said there's none of them have enough headroom. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so a bunch of things. So, you know, BB just pointed out that, you know, it, it, the pick dynamics gives you more room for pick dynamics. Absolutely. Uh, right. So what happens is Tracy Farmer is online, buddy Tracy Farmer. The only hey. guy besides Robin, who I know who personally owns a Dumble. And we're going to be talking that about him, about that right. amp and some Dumbles in the future. So Yeah, we're working on the Dumble episode with Tracy and uh, Tracy's local Brooklyn connections for more Dumbles. Dumbles and more Dumbles and more Dumbles. So. Yeah, so we're going to get yeah. some, uh, some real discussion on some real Dumbles. Um, yeah. And Tracy's the man. Great guitar player, too. Check him out, yeah. Tracy Farmer. Go on to Instagram. Right. All right. So... Um, Headroom is a big, big thing, and especially the okay. There's a bunch of great points. One point is if I'm going on a gig and I don't know, you never know what the gig's going to turn out to be. If you're plugging into, like you said, world class PA with rehearsals with a monitor guy, and you have in ears and there's total control, you can use a, a, a fractal. You can use anything you want to get. Right. Because if you have the amp at low volume, it doesn't really matter. If he's, so if he's running a Marshall 20-watt classic clean, that's pretty low volume because there's not a lot of headroom on those. I mean, it's, at your house it would be loud, but on a right. gig it's not going to be loud at all. So it doesn't yeah. matter. They just might get and run it through his in-ears or the monitors, so it's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm not in a situation like that at all because um, 
I don't play those kind of gigs, you know, and, and also the kind of music that I play, it's improvisatory in nature. So, uh, it's really important that I can improvise with the amplifier as part of the instrument of the performance. It's it also like we're talking about pedals, like the pedals on my floor. I prefer real pedals because when I use my Univibe, I'm improvising with the Univibe. I'll change the patches and settings in real time mm -hmm. for me to be able to create something, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the worst thing that can ever happen on a gig is you're playing, you're like, oh, this is getting kind of loud, and then you can't get any louder. You only get more distorted. So as you were saying, so for any lay people don't understand, in a tube amp or overdrive, you've ever noticed if you have a tube amp, you, it, as you clear, turn up the clean sound like, a, like an old Marshall or a boogie, Oh, no, Boogie, I mean, or, or, or Fender, right, with no master volume. You turn it up, and it gets louder and louder, and then it starts to get more and more distorted, and then it kind of shelves off, and you just get more and more distorted, and you don't get any louder. So you lose your headroom. So they, you're compressing, you're getting more distortion, which might be cool, but you don't get any louder. And then if you step on a boost pedal, you just get more distortion, and you don't get any louder. Right. So that's one of the main things that I've kind of figured out um, through trial and in error on many gigs where you're like, yeah, I had, I went through a bunch of amps in New York. I went through a, um, a Sir Badger, like the 18 watt. It was a really mm -hmm. nice sounding amp until I went on a gig and some guy had a, a deluxe a hot rod DeVille and he just destroyed me. He buried you with his 45 watt DeVille or Bar 60, are they 60? He, yeah. And then just, he had a telly and it was like, chank. And I'm like, this soft, and now we're not talking, you know, this other thing to get into is frequencies. And that's a big, big deal too. But that, well, that, about. right. That's where we're going to start talking. We'll, we'll save that till a little later when we talk about how loud an AC 30 is at 30 Watts versus something else. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Right. Yeah. So, um, which, is, which is part of the badger thing. Right. And so, right. so the, the, there was no headroom. So I just started playing louder. He was getting, this band was loud and loud. And the guy was a loud player. I'm not a particularly loud guitar player. I'm very conscientious of the guitar being the right volume for the gig. So I run my, my amps fairly loud, but I think I've said this on some live streams. When some of my friends sit into my gigs and they start playing and they're not used to the way I run my amp, they're a lot louder than I am. Hmm. Because I don't ever have, I don't have maybe the volume up all the way. You know, whereas someone who's, more of like, I guess like a rock guitar player, like straight, straight rock guitar player. Mm -hmm. I'll just, you know, they'll have the volume full up and kind of banging through stuff. And then as a more of a fusion-y, bluesy, whatever the heck you call it, what I do, I find I ride the volume a lot more. It's much more dynamic. And so Matt Schofield and I have had this discussion where when somebody sits in on his, his rig, they're like, it, it's twice as loud because he doesn't ever really crank it all the way up, all the way up. Right. Because he likes that clean headroom. So, um, so something like the Badger, which is by someone's a Badger question mark John Sir amp. It's got a cool built-in um, power, like attenuator. What's it called? Um, is it, it's not attenuator. It's a different kind of attenuator. I forget what it's called. Power yeah, scaling. Yeah, and everybody says the Sir is one of the best. Yeah, and it is a great sounding amp. And I know Mike Lando was using him on the road with um, for a while. He was using on the road with James Taylor once again. A very uh, low stage right. volume gig. Sure, but he's, there he is with an 18-watt Marshall-style amp. Yeah, right. So that's fine because he can do that. Now what he also figured out that he has live is um, he's got a, a box, like one of the, the mic, like speaker boxes, so he can turn it up a little bit and control the, you know, because what he probably was feeling, I'm assuming at some point, was some of the headroom, even as he's playing, you know, if you're mm -hmm. used to a, light, a higher wattage amplifier. Okay, so what does that mean? So... The, the crazy thing about decibels, which is a really interesting thing that we talk about. So wattage doesn't equal decibels or loud. And then we start getting into all this crazy, crazy stuff. That was always very confusing. So first of all, we're talking about tube amps, which work and sound very differently in terms of what you consider your wattage to a solid state amp. So like a 100 watt Marshall is way louder than a 100 watt solid state power amp. Right. Like right. by an order of magnitude, really. Mm -hmm. Um so the decibel thing, so what you were talking about, can you talk a little bit like what is a room decibel, like what's speaking level and what is... Oh, right, because we were talking, this is one of the things that I thought the guys at uh, TPS were just genius when they got their, their DB meter. Now, the DB meter's behind them, <laughs> which I always think is pretty funny yeah. because it's, it's clearly behind where the speakers are. And they say that all the time, that it's imprecise, it's imperfect. But one of the best things about that is that they're talking 
and we have this sense that, you know, if, if 90 dB is the beginning of ear damage, hearing damage, that people think that, oh, this conversation must be like, what, 10? No. You know, you can watch TPS and the guys are talking. It's 57 dBs. They're just having a conversation. They're sitting right next to each other. Not like Jeff and I, you know, where he's in Brooklyn, I'm in upstate. But anyway, so uh, you, you see that sense that, you know, where you live is someplace between, you know, uh, 45 and 65 or 75. It's my dad's family. You know, that's a different level of volume. Um, but that's that people don't realize that. And and then, you know, you, you start to get into, well, I, I used <laughs> no, to, I used, I used to, yeah, right. Everybody's family is different. I used to joke that in that side of the family, the loudest person always get, was the one who get to talk next. So, <laughs> so, but, but people don't realize that there isn't, it's a pretty narrow band. Mm -hmm. So the place where a gig lives is someplace between a speaking volume, because if, if you're sitting in a club and there's a band that you're there to hear, you probably can't be talking at your table without leaning in. So it's between what you can hear, so 60, 65, and hopefully 90, 95, yeah. you know, that you don't want to, like you said, you're very conscious of hurting people in the front row. Yeah. So it's a pretty narrow band of stuff. And so the wattages, now we're going to get to like what size of the room, et cetera, right. because um, that has everything to do with how much of the sound is bouncing around and open back, close back and all that kind of stuff, which you, that, that's your thing. I, I, I have not gigged yeah. anywhere near what you have. So, well, you know, talk about your backline in Europe as a, let's, let's figure out a baseline because you had okay. a backline request, right? Did you, did you pick up an amp at the beginning of the tour and carry it with you? Yeah, we rented um, the keyboard player. My friend Walter rented a friend's uh, hot rod, Deluxe. That's Deluxe. it was a one twelve. Yeah, and I prefer okay. the one twelve as opposed to the, the four twelve. Okay. It, or four for ten. Excuse me. Right. I'm just more used to twelve. Yeah. And what I did um, was I actually used uh, the uh, Kingsley Maiden into the return of the effects loop. So I bypassed the power the preamp section of the hot rods. I, I hot rods are really they're they're good amps. They're good. Um, I find they're great when you. This stuff, and if you watch the latest that pedal show, you know, yeah, the boys, the boys. I, I've uh, Simon got me one of these. This is I'll be talking about this the the uh juggler, which this is the front end of a Dumble overdrive special, basically. And then it's a two power amp, two preamp, and you run into the return of an effects loop, or you just run it into a power amp. And uh, it sounds amazing. And the video was the awesome the, the video when they just did because explained to me how to actually really use this because I was like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm you mean for guys with... really into gear, sometimes I'm like, I don't, you know, it's all these gain staging things. So yeah. it's a brilliant thing. And uh, so I've had this for a little bit. I got one from uh, from Simon, who's a great guy, who I'm also going to have on here soon to discuss all sorts of stuff. Because he's not only a dis pretty brilliant uh, you know, designer of pedals and amplifiers, he's just a right. ridiculous guitar player. Like, yeah. Like I'm almost like yeah, pedal schmetals. Let's hear. Let's talk about your guitar playing, man. You know, <laughs> right. right? I know Simon. Simon, um, a Guitar Institute grad, one of the early classes where like basically everybody at the early GIT institutes went on to be famous, crazy famous. Yeah. Like all the first three, four, or five years of the GIT went on to be famous. Somebody put in the Serge Lachances and HRD is all he's got. I my my gigging amp for the years that I gigged uh, a weekly jazz gig was a Hot Rod Deluxe. It was, okay. It was a, like in the mid mid nineties, I keep new. on saying about the, the pedal show, but they're so they're so good, <laughs> they're so they, yeah, they're great. Like half the stuff, a lot of things I talk about, I'm like oh, I learned it from those guys, you know. Yeah, right. For the money, it, it's a great amplifier, and what they said really eloquently, I thought was, it's not worth buying a much more expensive amplifier because you're not going to get that much better than an amplifier until you get to like a two rock. Right. So if you're going to upgrade, some way you can buy a preamp pedal and then bring your amp with you. And that's where I agreed with them entirely. I was like, that's a really brilliant statement. Cause I, I, I the reason why I asked for those amps on the road, there's a bunch of reasons. One, I know they're almost always the same. Mm -hmm. They're really good. I found them to be pretty reliable. And as Matt Schofield was talking, he goes, they're, they're all relatively like five, 10 years old. So it's not going to be like a 30 year old, you know, unmaintained twin that you mm -hmm. get that you just want to shoot yourself with no effects loop and you plug in, you're like, oh no. Right. And you know, it's got plenty of headroom. That's the big thing. So the amp's got a ton of headroom. So the way I was running it, I don't really love the overdrive channels on those amps. I've not, they've not worked for me. So I ran the, the Kingsley into the front and I ran my Kingsley uh, 
No, you you, you, you were going into the front, into the, you weren't into the front of the amp. You were into the directly into the power section. Yeah. Right. So you you plug into the return of the power section, and that basically bypasses your preamp section. Um, and then I just used all of all pedals from there. Right. Um, and so I use my I just played there. That's my harlot into the classic reverb signature. So it's a great ampy sound. Okay, so then I controlled the volume from there. It was a pr it turned out to be, I, I think I've talked about it a little bit, we, we got, we butted a lot of heads at the beginning of the gig because most of the guys in the band are jazzers, right? And not that there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> I'll go get a, get a pretty guitar. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, a different prop. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, um, you know, I'm a rock guy at yeah. heart. You know, I'm a rock guitar player, you know, mm -hmm. whatever kind of rock you want to call it, but I'm a rock guitar player. And so um, it's, uh, it's interesting and they were like, oh, my God, that's too loud. And I'm like, no, it's <laughs> it's the volume it needs to be. Uh -huh. So we had this back and forth about what the stage volume should be. Um, and a few times I had to turn the amp around because I, I want to be cool. You know what I mean? I don't want to I don't want to kill people in the front. And I want to be I'm a team player because the, when the band is a team, it works the best, you know. Mm. Um, and I'm also sometimes the size of the room. It So you have to go with that. So every once in a while I had to turn the amp around. I didn't really love doing that, but. You know, one thing, a nice compliment we got was a sound guy came over to us and they just said, like, I didn't do much of anything. Like, you guys were just, I didn't really even touch, I didn't touch the board. Like, I just brought up the levels and you, the dynamics were all from the stage. And he was like, I really want to say it's great to have professionals. Like, you turned the amp around, you understood what's going on in this room. Mm -hmm. Like, I played one chord and I was like, oh, nope. Like it was one of those rooms where it was like, bam, you know, it was yeah. a great sounding room, but it was not, it was maybe more of an acoustic -y kind of sounding room. So I'm like, all right, I just gonna, I'm just going to kill people. Well, and one of the reasons I asked you to talk about that tour is that I know that you, so you were carrying one amp, which I thought I remembered you saying that you were yeah. carrying one amp, but you played rooms that were like a tremendous range of sizes. Oh yeah. It was space. crazy. So talk, talk about that. Like, so you're, you're running a hot rod deluxe with a pedal board going mm -hmm. into the, in the effects end, the yeah. effects return. Mm -hmm. And then you played rooms of what sizes with that? Well, we played rooms from like, you know, 150 people, like, uh, you know, like where people at tables eating, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess if you've been to the Iridium in New York, like that kind of room, like it's a, it's a listening room, you know, mm -hmm. like it's people that was, there those, for the music. Yeah. yeah. And then we played some theaters, which were huge. Like, you know, like, well, it's a 500 seater. I'm like 500 seater, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately we did, pretty well they were never empty thank god you know what i mean which is really cool so that's a whole different experience so here's to the point is that's where i'm glad i had that headroom because it allows me to play the way i like to play guitar which is very dynamically so i never turn off my overdrive pedal so i end up um i have gain staging so i barely ever play clean like bone dry clean so um so there's my kind of There's always a little bit of hair. Yeah. And you have your I, volume turned down? That's my volume turned down on the guitar. I yeah, bring it up. Yeah. It's hard to sell because I'm going through these headphones. You don't hear the same dynamics. Like, sure. if you're loud enough, that doesn't sound that loud coming through here, but if you're loud on a stage, that's going to be a really nice, punchy, clean sound. Then you bring it down. And then for a solo, you know, sorry, I have to put the pedal off the side here. Right, so I can control everything, and what it gives me to have that clean headroom of that power section is I know what's going to happen every night then. Right. So if the room is really big and the band's getting really loud, I have the, the horsepower and the amplifier. And this brings me to another point of how I end up gigging in New York quite a bit. That's where I was going to ask you to go next. Yeah, is I always assume I cannot get overdrive from my amplifier. <laughs> I run, I mean, I can a little bit. I got the two rocks, but then you're dealing with effects loops. Okay, so this brings me all these other questions and, and, and things like that. So um, I'm just, I used to kind of think about effects loops and running stuff. And I remember David Grissom at a workshop. Uh, so I'm like, what about effects loops? He's like, 
nobody uses a fax <laughs> right every, every nashville guy yeah you know we both know zach childs and we all watched we're all fans of his true tone lounge yeah. episodes and um inevitably he's like so do you were you going into the loop and he's even talking to guys in the 80s and he's like mm-hmm. yeah nobody nobody goes into the everybody's in the front of the amp yeah front nobody the uses amp. effects loops nobody, yeah, nobody. Effects. um the reason why i don't i might put like um a reverb in your effects loop and leave it on the top of the amp and be done but i'm not i don't want to deal with four cables running to the front of the stage and right so what i end up we have been doing a lot with the um and as BB says, not all effects loops are equal. And that is a huge point. Sometimes you plug right. into one and you're like, you're like, this sounds terrible. Which is one of the reasons people don't use them because you're going to show up for backline. And, yeah. and you know, um, the guys, again, TPS, they were talking about amps like the Matchless mm-hmm. has an incredibly hot, you know, the old HD30s had an incredibly hot loop. Yeah. It's like, And there's no way to dial it down. So you're going to put something in there and it's going to completely slam and you know, give you this awful signal back from your delay, right? So your analog delay, especially. Yeah, anyway, it, yeah. And then there's the issues of say, like people ask Robin all the time, does he use the overdrive channel in his boogie? I mean, boogie. Geez, why am I saying boogie today? In his Dumble, <laughs> in his PV Classic 50, is he using the overdrive? No, you know, in his PV, in his Gorilla, in his Rage or whatever PV Rage. <laughs> in his pig nose. Uh, yeah, his pig nose. Um, he doesn't use the effects loop in that because, first of all, for the dumble you gotta use the dumble later to all this stuff and then uh there's no reverb in the amp and then we go to the overdrive channel it boosts the reverb too much you're hitting the amp front because it, it's a cascading situation and, and it's a shared eq section all these things right so what i end up doing is um running my amp pretty much clean right and using pedals and we live in the age of amazingly good pedals right you know and when i say running my amp clean it's running it's doing it it's sort of what it's designed for so it, at least it's your rocks like you can get overdrive from the, the bloomfield and all these things but the way matt schofield is running his his two rocks is really loud but he always has his overdrive on on the floor and he just uses his volume goes back and forth so what this allows me to do, and I recommend this everyone been blabbing about all this stuff, is I would much rather have the headroom and horsepower from the amplifier and have a nice little pedal board so I'm always going to be good when I'm rolling. Like if the band starts getting louder, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to turn up either the, the master volume on the amplifier or on my preamp thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm always going to have the same amount of distortion, delay, and reverb because I'm just making louder what I've already supplied by my pedal board. Now, this is great, especially if you don't know what's going on. I'm not knocking the classic 30s. Those are great amps. I was just trying to think of everybody because Robin plays a dumble. I was going to so, say, you're, you're, you're moving in a direction away from a dumble. That's all. Exactly. Okay. Some big so, steps down. Yeah. Now, okay, if I'm on a, a tour and I'm well rehearsed and you got a sound guy and you have money and people moving your amps, you, you can start changing. I'm going to do this head's my, like Eric Johnson. My Marshalls are my overdrive heads. I'm going to switch channels. And right. he knows that gig. That's why he's never really changed much in his rig over 30 years because it just works and it sounds great. I can't do that. I don't have people moving gear for me. I don't want to carry that much stuff around. So I need to, I do the channel switching, amp switching just with the pedals, you know? Um, so uh, if I'm playing a hard rock gig and it's a metal gig or something, like if I'm playing my, um, somebody just mentioned uh, Friedman effects loop. Yeah, really good a Friedman effects loop in a Friedman because uh, it's buffered and it's it's parallel. Not no, it's parallel and it's you got you got send and return. It's the good effects loop. <laughs> it's the good one. It's the good one. But then again, then Too I'm, buffered. But if I want to turn on and off my reverb or delay, then I'm gonna have four cable method, and I'm just like yeah, you know. Mm. So for rock gigs, if I'm playing a straight on rock gig, then I'm just gonna. Uh, maybe just you turn up the Marshall and you just run a little bit of slap back in the front and then there you go. So You're back done. to Robin's thing. So he runs his everything into the clean channel of his Dumble and then he steps on pedals because it right. just works better. But in the studio, he will use the overdrive channel of the, the Dumble. Right. All right. So 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 let's go to Wattage again. So mm-hmm. you're, you, you did your European tour yeah. uh, with a 40 watt. It's a 40 watt amp. Yeah. And did you find there were any places where you ran out of headroom? No, because that is a ragingly loud 40 watt amp. It like is. Those are those are significant. Okay, so for me, my general thing that I've discovered is uh, it's got to be 30 watts or louder for me to actually want to use the amp. And no, we're not talking about outdoor gigs where you need 100 watts if you're mm-hmm. not dealing with a great PA. You know what I mean? You need 
right. that's people like when do you use a hundred watt amp you ever do an outdoor gig you're like where did my amp go and that's when you really feel the headroom issue where you're like oh my god yeah. you know like i have no i can't play so i usually like 30 watts to be the minimum of something um so the classic reverb studio the studio signature amplifier by two rock is 35 watts and it's designed largely for a clean headroom platel platform situation that's the way mm -hmm. eli designed that amp and it's a total winner for me and then we can get into the cabinets which makes a big deal frequency wise all right so um i did a gig with robin and we had two two rocks because they were kind enough to supply us with amps so robin got the the ts1 which is a, basically an overdrive special and i got a 40 watt bloomfield and next to him the 40 watt bloomfield which is what i own here which is cool for new york it was it was not great for that gig because I couldn't get enough clean headroom out of the amplifier. So the the TS one's a hundred watt. Hundred watt, yeah. And um, behind me is my classic reverb signature. That's a hundred watt. And my Marshall Super leads a hundred watt, which seems a lot louder than my classic reverb signature because of the frequency. Is this something we can talk about? Well, I, right, and the preamp staging and the yeah. way the EQ runs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's right. all sorts of stuff. so how much how much signals being dumped to ground, right? Yeah. So this is interesting, guys. So um, for me, I mean, this is so in the weeds, dorky sh stuff. But we no, I'm, I'm, of, I'm laughing because we got to tell them that it's, it's it. This is good stuff. It is good stuff. It's, it's just like, it's, right. It's like comedian saying, "Stay with me, folks, because this is beautiful." Yeah. So here's my rundown. Um, anything less than 30 watts for me, I have a lot of time handling, because they run out of headroom way too soon, and they run out of headroom before you know it, and then you're in trouble. Like you're on a gig and the drummer starts playing a little harder. It's the second set and you're like, all I'm playing is distorted the whole night. There's no dynamics. Mm -hmm. There's no interaction. Like it's just because you're just, you're trying to play louder and you just can't play louder. And what I mean by louder, I, d I really mean more dynamically. Like you want the high. So if the drummer starts hanging, you know, bam, 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 where he's using the heavier sticks because it's more rocking and, and you're it. 90 dBs and he's at 100 dBs. Right. He's killing you. You you already went. Err. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just go and you, and you right. top out. So. Right. So so would you would you say an AC30 is your is like the low level? We were talking before we got on that AC30s are famously loud, maybe yeah. even underrated wattage wise. Um, yeah. Because you know there's a lot of people that have a four ELA four amps that just call them what they are 36 watts. Mm -hmm. or whatever you know you're really in jtm 45 territory volume wise which um, is really loud which yeah. is crazy loud yeah yeah you're yeah. you're 106 dbs or whatever right yeah yeah right so i love ac30s um i don't like ac30s at my house right because you can't really get your foot in it you can't get your foot in it. and they're very mid-rangey and not a lot of low end mm -hmm. and they're very chimey which works great in the, the mix of a band right right which but is another conversation we could talk about if right we have if we have time but um yeah ac30 like so ac30s i love those um on gigs because they're we, oh, we talk about you know friends of mine who were louder players like david grissom will always ask for an ac30 if he can't get one of his amps and his and his amps a 30 mm -hmm. and the thing about david's amp is it's it's voiced someplace between an ac30 and a Oh, Jason Lachlan's here uh, chiming in on how loud yeah. ac30s are it's um, loud yeah someplace loud. between uh, his amp is someplace between voiced wise between an, uh, a Vox and a Marshall, right. and and he's just and it's way overbuilt. I mean, I've there's there's one at uh, at Ish, and I've had a chance to play it. It's just you just like, and he says that he hardly turning up his master volume. W one of the things about him using that pretty loud amp is that it has such a good master volume circuit that it lets him do what he needs to do in different rooms. Right. Which that's like what BV said about effects loops is absolutely true about master volumes. There's master yeah. volumes where when you go past half. You sound like you're choking the amp to death, or or when you go hoo, hoo, like like famously on some of the eight Marshall eight hundreds and think you're like boom, like you turn that master volume and it jumps from like zero oh, yeah. to <laughs> hoo, hoo, you're trying to find that spot that and tiny turn that little down. <laughs> guitar player. You got to turn that down. So uh, Tracy's saying loud amps rule. Okay, Tracy, why do loud amps rule? Because Okay, let me talk about Tracy for a minute, which is funny. Like, um, <laughs> this was his guitar. This was Tracy's I was guitar. Say, let's let's get this out of the way. <laughs> All right, this was Tracy's, and it was another mutual friend of ours, and it was another mutual friend of ours who was uh, the owner of Two Rock, Eli. Then it came to me. So the three prior owners to this all traded out for other 
things like vintage guitars, all these kind of things we talked about. I remember when Tracy got this, he's like, man, this guitar is amazing. You know, and, it is and, amazing. And whenever, whenever my friend Tracy says something's great, then it's great. Just like we talk all the time. And it, 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 Tracy has a reason to know. Uh, yes. And he also, when he, when he grabs, he can do things I can't. Like he's got a house and I got a place in New York, but I can't sit there in my practice room and go, Chah! you know, <laughs> like, right, and, you know right. and crank it up. I can't he's do in the that. Country. Yeah. yeah, he's in the country, so he can do that. So Tracy just put headroom. So for me, it's all about headroom. And growing up, I went into that idea of 18 watts or 5 watt. Like you talk about 5 watt world, like I, like champs, I play those things. I'm like, I don't know what anybody does with this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now, I know they record well, and Eric Johnson just recorded that new version of Sitting on Top of the World that's tr recorded with a champ and all oh, that. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's not, but it's, it's not my favorite Eric Johnson tote. I mean, it's great. It's Eric Johnson, but <laughs> well, and, okay. And, you, and you, we've said that when I bring that up, you're like, Michael's, yeah, well, you're like, I hate those tones on, on the Derek and the Thomas I do, record. I know, I do. <laughs> when we were doing the, when we were doing yeah. the, the preset pack, mm -hmm. you were like, okay, this, I've got it just right, and I don't like it. But it is the sound on the record, so that's what it's got to be in the preset pack. So yeah, yeah. no. Tracy just said um, the '57 Strat he traded this for. Uh, this was better than the '57 Strat. This is a pretty magical guitar, as Tracy said. It's like it's it's as good as any guitar I've ever tried. Uh, that's not vintage. That's not. There's vintage. something. Yeah, there's something really great. And I went back and forth in the guitar, and you know, I I did. It was quite a, uh, you know, I I it was a painful trade. But it was a good trade. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, it's the one you always have in your lap when I call you. Yeah. Oh, I'm I've never put it down since I got it. Yeah. It's that's, great. That's the answer right there. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jason Lachlan, champs or champs are super overrated. Yeah. I can't stand them. Like I just every time I plug in, I know there's gonna be people who love them. I've tried the hand wired ones. I play it and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel well, like I'm, I, I'm doing I'm doing this live stream tomorrow about my favorite at home amps, mm -hmm. and I will only be speaking of champs and passing okay good right yeah, yeah. okay it, so everybody can tune in for that and jason can come heckle me about champs tomorrow i appreciate it i, I will like that I'll be... I, I know i know down I with champs i can count on you guys <laughs> <laughs> um uh oh they only sound good at derrick and dominoes because everything is doubled which yeah. is a good point yeah right good point. right you can you can make it sound like something fatter right yeah anyway um okay so real quick uh little stuff don't forget keith and i have a patch uh, a, there we a go. collection of eric clapton good, good segue yeah patches we did for the <laughs> line six eight the hx stomp and the pod go and helix and we spent yeah. a lot of time on those uh dialing into different errors and we that's where we kind of had the conversation about the soup uh, about the champ you're like listening to it i'm like wow those guitar sounds in layla would not be my choice of guitar sounds but Sounds good because Jason said they're doubled and it's in just a great song. And a great well, like you said, it's, on, it's another whole episode. The reality is that a lot of people would say that about a tube screamer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, with their particular rig into whatever yeah. amp, particular amp or whatever. Um, yeah, anyway. Right. So another thing that Headroom allows me to do is I, I play much, and most guitar players I know play much cleaner live than they do at home. Huh. I think. Like, I don't use a ton of distortion, but when you're loud you're getting the compression you're getting the 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 interaction between you and the guitar creating that cool circuit of compression and and sustain and um so the volume gives me um what are you going when you're going to get a uh, sponsor by warby parker okay these are warby parker actually <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea let me ask um yeah, it's funny the reason why i'm wearing these now is because every time i'm reading the comments i realize i was like you know, squinting because I got That's contacts good. and I'm just, That's yeah, good. you know. All right. Yeah. Anyway. I had so, a long comment the other day about how I, how I should get new glasses and a new haircut. So oh, good. Very helpful. Yeah. Very the people helpful. are, uh, people's, people have the most helpful comments sometimes. They do. Well, actually, he couched it in the, in the, my girlfriend says I should tell you all of this. Oh, you good. Get a better than $12 haircut. I, I, it might look like one, but I actually spend more than money on my haircut. Anyway, yeah. She went through the whole thing. Shave your mustache. She's going to give me a complete makeover. To right. which I responded, I'm a guitar player. That yeah. was it. That was what I wrote back. Anyway. Yeah. Clearly, um, I'm over it. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, all of this also comes down to the style of music you play. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you're playing more like bluesy interactive stuff, 
it's really important to me that I have the headroom to do whatever it is the music allows. If you're playing, you know, always really distorted, the best players still kind of turn down their volume and, and, and it's always interactive. So the bands I like, no matter what genre, are the ones that, you know, any great guitar player that we know, like I'm friends with Alex Skolnick of Testament, great guitar player, he gets all of it. You know what I mean? Like, so Testament's a big loud band, but you don't see him stepping on pedals. It's like an overdrive and a, the volume knob. And um, Angus Clark, you know, it's a playing in these big, rock gigs it's the marshall and sometimes an overdrive pedal and your volume knob on your guitar you know so this right. is how this right so all right so to kind of run through all this i i find i need about 30 watts for me to be happy obviously you're playing like a to- like a coffee shop we're not talking about right, that right, we're talking right. about a real gig yeah right. like you know a big gig or bigger gig um so the outdoor gigs are the whole other thing like you kind of need unless you got the great in-ear monitor system and all that it's, you, you want like 100 watts and I think um, I think Jason was just talking about that. He did an outdoor gig, and it was like, "Wow, forgot." Right. And I said, "Yeah." Well, you know, when I when I used to gig the eight, the Hot Rod Deluxe, mm-hmm. when I first got that gig, I had these I had these delusions of grandeur of Pat Metheniness, and I thought I needed stereo, so I bought two Hot Rod Deluxes, and and I I had them for twelve or fifteen years because all of the club gigs I did on HRD was great. They would book us for outside. I would just mm-hmm. take them both. Yeah. And I would just run them both. I was like, I, I can fill the space. I'll give you 80 watts of noise on, my, on the stage. And that was, that was great. So. And, and that's the other <clears throat> thing I was going to talk about is, all right, so I've got my two rock with the 212 cabinet. This 212 cabinet, sometimes it's just way too big for the room. I mean, one, it's physically big to bring around with me. But if I'm playing a smaller venue, a 212 cabinet can sometimes supply too much information for the room. I'm not talking headroom, I'm just talking about like there's a lot of low end in that. Like it's just a huge sounding cabinet. And when I used to play the 55 bar in New York all the time, like I found the amp work that worked best was using the 112. When I started bringing like a 212, it was just too big for the mm-hmm. room. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like the, the sonic, the, the room was such that there was too much being information being put out by the speakers and more volume. So when I run this two track 212, as opposed to the Turok 112, the same amp, it, I can't say it's twice as loud, but it's significantly louder because you're moving more air. Right. And so that's something to think about too. So oftentimes, like for New York, a 112, and I found a 112 combo has been really great. Um, I generally was like a head and a speaker guy, head and a cab for certain amps. But once I started messing with this, this especially this Turok I have, there's a mid frequency in the smaller cabinet that in a gig appears louder because you're pushing through the mix more. You got this focus. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't realize your studio is a combo. Uh, it was not a, a, initially. I had a head and then okay. the, the cab. But then I, I, there was when I got it from those guys, I actually wanted the combo first. And I would have a head just in case we travel. Yep. Um, and so then they sent me the combo. And I, I put in um, an Eminence, their EV, like the Neo... EV, yep. so it's a few pounds lighter, and yep. I used it the other night, and I'm like, this is this is the amp I've been looking for mm. my whole time in New York. Like, mm. tons of headroom, takes pedals great. If I want, I can kind of crank up the input section and get some breakup from the amplifier. Yep. It's got reverb built in. Right. So, right. that's a really great so, amp, but if, if I'm going to hit a huge... Sta- sorry? No, go ahead. I was just going to bring us back to the how much is too much. So, so 40 is enough. And your mm-hmm. 35 studio is probably, probably, it's a pair of 6L6s? Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably modestly rated, yeah. shall we say. Right. Um, what, so what's too much? Not to carry, but like, what would be hard to wrestle with at the bitter end from okay. the stuff behind you? My, my Marshall Super Lead. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Even with the master <laughs> volume on it, like, and it, this is where we're coming down to it. And, and BB just talked about frequencies, right? So it's a frequency thing. So, um, just Jason Lachlan still on here. He did a, does a Zeppelin gig and he said, yeah, you should borrow my Marshall. Cause you know, it's the amp that Jimmy Page used. You yeah. Know, super right. bass actually. But you know, um, and he was like, Oh my God. Like, you know, and Tracy just bought. Oh, wait, he, so he did use the Marshall. No, he couldn't. He oh. decided because it's a beast. They're beasts. Like, and then Tracy's got this. Um, uh, he bought. Okay, I, I chose a super bass for Robin, a hundred watt super bass. 
Oh, you picked it she, out, right? I picked it out. I found it in New York. I tried it. It was an amazing sounding amp. I remember um, the story. Yeah. Then he used it on a few gigs. Like, man, this thing is too freaking loud. And for him to say that, because he's like the loudest guy in the world. Right. And then Tracy ended up getting it, which is great. And he's like, this thing is just too loud. Like, <laughs> and so. Um, too loud for Tracy. That's yeah, a new yeah. phrase. That's so a t-shirt. The, that's a t-shirt oh, tracy i'll be putting those in the store everybody yeah. those will be in the store next week too loud for tracy as jason just put not usable in 2022 so in in many ways yes yeah, so this thing is so loud and it doesn't really do its thing the way that the power amp section is and one thing i found out thanks to simon jarrett on that pedal show i know a fair bit about amps but a lot of the overdrive from marshless apparently comes from the phase inverter and the phase inverter hitting the power section, right? Yeah. yeah. Where as opposed to the boogie style, I keep on saying boogies today. What is, oh my gosh, to the dumbbell <laughs> well, style amps. Which actually, the, front, the sentence you were going to say is also true that the cascading gain gauge of a boogie also is a lot of preamp pr distortion, right? right? Right. Yes, thank you. Thank you for covering. And so You're the, welcome. The, the, uh, the Sub subconscious correct two, answers. The two rock sort of thing for me is this. Um, uh, the, oh, the overdrive is largely coming from the preamp section. Yeah. In, in a way that I like, it's not buzzy or fizzy and anything like that. So the Marshall for it to get it to do its thing, it's got to be really loud. And even with the master volume on it, it still doesn't do. So that to me is too much. Now, yeah. where would I use this besides uh, as a visual? <laughs> <laughs> Except for the prop that it is. Because that's really all this is, guys. It looks oh. freaking cool. But it, does it, look, it does look it, great. It sounds great. I've had it forever, and if I mm -hmm. got rid of it, I would never buy another one, and I got it really cheap, and I've had it for like 15, 20 years. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's one of those things like, ah, just hold on to it. I think about selling it. I'm like, I should sell that. It's a great stand for the Turok. It, yeah, it, they're, it's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> and it, they're heavy. Like the, 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 um, the, uh, the Transformers on one side, so you pick it up as they were up, like it tilts. Anyway, yep. so to me, that's too much. I think the only place where I could use that would be like an outdoor gig and then i would still then it would start it does break up a little earlier because it's a, a, a marshall front end and it's a super lead so the way this preamp tubes are lined up and all that kind of stuff so i would still end up going back to a cleaner platform to get the hit room so what is too much 100 watt marshall super lead super bass way too much it's but just, 100 but 100 watt um two rock gives you all of these, you have so much control over gain stages. I don't know how much people know about dumbbells. I don't know that much. I don't have a ton of experience, although I did build a five watt ODS back mm -hmm. in the day with, and I, and I still have a dumbbellator, which, which goes with my champ. But the, the reality is you have all these different gain stages. What you're really doing is balancing where your distortion is coming from. How much is coming from the preamp? How much is coming from the phase inverter? How much are you sending to the power amp? You know, Robin plays loud, but he'd be the first one to tell you that his master is pulled way back, too. Yeah. In his rig rundowns, he talks about that. Oh. And he's still loud as Jesus. In, the, the, I've the seen him a bunch of times. Amazing. Yeah, right. Well, BB's just saying, I like, fishy fish. My friend John Bollinger, you know, from uh, yeah. Premier Guitar, uses a 100-watt katana. Yeah, well, it's loud enough, but my 100-watt super lead would just decimate that. Like oh, a 100-watt yeah. yeah, yeah. tube amp. I mean, this is what, like... Eric Clapton used to fill Royal Albert Hall, like yeah, two right. of these. Like there were no PAs really that would were handling it. So right. this is yeah. So there's a difference. Hundred watt, you know, um, you know. Okay, Joe Bonamassi is using his hundred watt amps. Yeah, because he's got them cranked up. Maybe Tracy. I've not been mm -hmm. on Joe's stage. Tracy has been on Joe's stage and played his gear. Well, and he's got all those screens. That's Insanely whole loud, yep. and the screens right is um they're up so the sound is being kind of projected up it's not hitting yep. the people in the front row and right. killing them yep. yeah um steve morris says 100 watt solid state is not a 100 watt tube that's something true we were talking before the stream earlier today um actually during lunch and i was saying that um the reality is i kind of double the wattage like these i got a pair of catalyst um 60s to mm -hmm. run in a wet dry as an experiment and frankly so far these line six catalyst amps i can't believe how much you can get in gear for so little money now? This yeah, is yeah. like a it's like a pair of pedals. Is, is yeah. it three hundred bucks a piece, right? Yeah. But uh, and I'm running one as a Fender and one as a Matchless. But the the kicker is, I basically put it at sixty and treat it like a thirty. Put it at thirty and treat it like a Princeton. You know, because yeah. that's that's about right. It's it's about half 
the the solid state watches. And I'm sure Bollinger, I, I'm, I'm actually, I should tell people I'm planning a trip to Nashville. I'll try to get a hang together uh, while I'm in town because I'm definitely going to hang out with Bollinger and Sean and some other people that I've worked with and never been in the room with. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm sure the places that John is, you know, playing, people are trying to drink and have a conversation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure a Hunter Rock Katana, I'm sure I'll bet he doesn't have it on a Herd of Watts. I'll bet yeah. he has it down at 50, and then it really sounds like a 20 water with some headroom. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then the hunt, like the solid state amps, will have more headroom because you're like getting the tube compression and all that right. kind of stuff. And there is no phase inverter, and you don't, you're not getting distortion from different parts of the circuit. It's all simulated distortion showing up at a Class D preamp. Right. I mean power amp. So right. So if I can. I don't have the focus quite right on autofocus. So <laughs> this is the preamp section of a dumbbell. So you have your you have your clean channel volume, which would cascade. There's your EQ there. That would cascade into the overdriven sound. And here's your overdrive volume, uh, overdrive amount. So as with the two rocks so with the Bloomfield drive, the amount of overdrive you get is not just from here. It's also from the, the amount of output that you have on your volume one. So volume one cascades into volume two. Right. And that's your overdrive. So you, you can, it, yes, there's lots of gain stage. And then you have volume here. And then you also have like the bypass switch, which will take I was going to say, one, isn't one of those foot switches a, um, a tone stack lift? Yep. And, and the other one bypasses the tone stack, which gives you back more like a tweed sound, mm -hmm. which then gives you this mid range lift as well. Right. So when, when we do the Dumble episode with Tracy, the logical follow up would to have be um, to have Simon Jarrett on to talk about. Um, gain structures than dumbbells because yeah, he's yeah. he's built those style of amps and preamps for years and yeah. years yeah um, and, and he's got the guitar chops to prove it so. yeah 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 no and he knows yeah he's, he's pretty he's pretty okay he's an uh, okay player yeah so here's the thing so like as as tracy just said because he's got some comments you know com like, yeah you know right. and so all different varied size amps and everything and doing there's a perfect example playing indoor and outdoor gigs so as indoor gigs you're using your classic reverb, the miniature one like that for me in indoor and medium sized gigs. Cause the frequency in that thing is just so great. I was blown away with how good it sounded and how it filled the room. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about open back. It's open back, open back versus closed back, you know? Okay. Right. So, and then for like a bigger gig, you're talking about outdoor. I would, if I were going to use that head, which I would feel comfortable doing maybe, but I would run it into the two twelve cabinet. Right. Or I would just bring the 100 watt, and then that's got a 50 watt switch in the back, and you could start to kind of run the volume. You got to and again, it out. and again, the 212 cab to move more air. Yeah, and that fills yeah. up a lot more space. So, to answer, answer all these questions, okay, we're talking about two rocks, and these are crazy expensive amplifiers. I right. know. The right. same holds true, and this is why I ask for the hot rods when I'm on the road because I know they're going to have the output to do whatever I want, and then I use pedals to control the whole overall volume of everything. So if I have to play really low, I can handle that from the volume on the floor. And if it has to get loud, I know that amp can do whatever it is I need to do to run to do it. Uh, a, um, I know like Jeff Beck for a while was using the, uh, the Blues Junior. And I use the Blues Junior. A pro the Junior. Pro Junior. Pro Junior. I was using those on some gigs for a long time. Very small gigs. They're fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, then, story, the story always was he had two Pro Juniors behind his uh, backline Marshall stacks. Yeah. Right. Because everything is mic'd. And mic'd, right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So now I used some of those on some gigs, and sometimes I ran two, and it was okay. It was good. But then it, the drummer would start hitting, and then you're like, uh, yeah. and I play much more ma maturely now, and mm -hmm. I would miss that headroom. So I couldn't do it anymore. Right. I couldn't go back to it because yeah. it's just too little. I have, a, I have a buddy, Dave Honorado from Atlanta. Sure. does a ton of rock gigs. You know Dave. So yeah. And Dave is actually filling my chat with answers about um, uh, Eddie Van Halen's gear. Because he's oh. a total Van Halen nerd, but uh, he he is a fifty-seven deluxe Fender deluxe Tweed deluxe, mm -hmm. and he's got a parametric EQ, so he can sculpt the frequencies. So he actually gains back headroom when he steps on that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's really that interesting because yeah. the, the thing doesn't collapse and stuff, and it's plenty. And of course, it's it's a fifty-seven with all original everything because it's Dave. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so and it sounds amazing. You know, he's he's there with a junior. He's he's the epitome of five watt world. I just keep yeah. mailing him T-shirts. Tracy's asking, is there a PayPal for this live show? Yeah, it's my PayPal. Yeah. It, the link is, it, 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 you want to throw up, there's the link in the description. If you want to throw it up, you want to, or you could do a top chat, anybody, all those things you guys want to help out. There you go. Great. Yeah. We, we love you. Suddenly so, done, Tracy. Thank you, man. 
Yeah. Any questions on what we're talking about? Everybody, it's getting to get kind of an hour. Somebody was asking which pedal show we were referring to. You were mostly talking about the recent episode where Simon Jarrett was on, but also the one where EV speakers. They yeah, talked a about lot about speakers. volume and with speakers and speaker efficiencies and those kinds of things. Right. Yeah. So, the, and then a speaker is very often is a, is a, um, hey, thanks for the top chat. <laughs> I mean, you somebody go. gave you already hit us on PayPal. Thank you. Oh. Um, the speakers are a huge thing. Okay, here we go. So uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not answering questions at this moment. Let's just think about this. Um, the speaker is going to make a huge, huge difference as well, how efficient your speaker is, right? So if I'm using a, a 20 watt, 25 watt greenback, that's going to bring down the output volume of the amplifier. So a lot of times when I'm using my super lead, I run it through a 212 with greenback 75s, which emulate the sound of a greenback, but can handle 75 watts each, and I run them so it can handle 150 watts. So, but when I plug it into my two rock 212 cab that's got like the 280 watt speakers the amp is way louder so when people use evs right um there's a lot of headroom they can they don't it's kind of what you're hearing coming out of the amp is what's coming through the speaker and they're really heavy and super efficient so they're way louder than many other speakers so that's the other part of the equation so there's that and then there's also the frequency range that the speaker really wants to to live at Mm -hmm. so it it kind of gets you down down deep in the weeds but just to simplify everything um i know i was we're talking about crazy expensive amps but a hot rod or, or the like um i'd done some gigs with okay perfect example uh for me i don't love deluxes there's a frequency issue for deluxes that I'm not crazy about hmm. too, a little too scooped for me. Like mm-hmm. even with my two rocks, I kind of push the mids a little bit mm-hmm. and there's not enough headroom for me. Mm-hmm. Like I hit it and they just start to kind of collapse and that's, yep. you know, um, so to sum up, it sounds like, um, 30 Watts is the bottom is yeah. the floor for gigging and really kind of most of the stuff that you do. Yeah. A hundred is, too much but it depends because there's 100 waters that give you lots of control Mm -hmm. and then it sounds like you know and as we all know because of multipliers of tubes there's a big there's a big chunk of the 40 to 50 watt you know tube two 6l6s two el34 amps and that's an easy place to live with some headrooms so yeah yeah you know and um if you're using hey thanks frank hey man how's it going frank ladden thanks so much uh good to see you again frank um there's also, as you were saying, like six V sixes just distort and overdrive differently and they have different amount of headroom if you're using two or four than than you do from two six L sixes. So mm-hmm. uh, this is for EL four six four six V sixes, this one. Um, oh, the, Bloom, the Bloomfield's four six V sixes. It's a uh, the forty watt, forty uh-huh. slash twenty. Oh, right, right. And it's really, really loud. Um, I prefer the oomph. And that the two six L sixes gives me a little bit more um, right. low end, you know, and girth and ass. <laughs> <laughs> what I say to you earlier, the junk in the trunk. I'm like, yeah, yeah the, I, I, can't, I can't make that work. No, I can't work that work. It's I'm, I'm, too, more I'm too up to state for that. Anyway, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Thanks, Steve Moore. Okay, so Steve Moore had a question. Um, I can bring these up. I keep on forgetting. Steve's right. Steve is saying um, you never know what you need until you're practicing with a band for a yeah. while. Yeah. Okay, Steve, the, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think, you know, you're in your room and like, oh, man, this is going to be playing like uh, the Jason when he got the uh, the the Marshall 1987, 84, 1974, 87 is 50 watt, right. 74. which is 74. Um, he's like, oh, it's great. I'm like, yeah, yeah. just just you wait. <laughs> it's great at home. I've went. Like, I've. Been through Mike, it. Yep. Mike Provost says, do you prefer 30 watts class A or class AB? So it's interesting, the definition of class A and class AB, but really I'd say that has a lot to do with feel. Yeah. Um, a versus AB and depends on where you are in the volume on the on the amp and where you really, it really has to do with when is your foot in the power tubes. Yep. Um, and that. the drummer, so, you, you, if you just put drummer, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, drummer. Drummer, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah. So what he's talking about is it depends on your drummer. If you got a guy who, you know, hits real right. soft and I don't like playing with, that's not my kind of drummer. 
I like right. the guy who really digs in. So that's where I want to be able to make sure. And then when I use overdrive on the floor, that would be great, you know. Right. Um, thanks, TCM, for that we got here. Yeah, for Perry, the top Perry, chat. Perry's here. He's, 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 so he's probably reminding everybody that I did those shirts last month. In the front, it says, um, most music from the least gear 5-watt world. And on the back, it says, least music from the most gear 100-watt world. So we kind of we kind of you know go both ways in in the five watt world universe. We got a lot of one hundred watt friends. Let's just say some of my best friends to my play hundred waters. There you go. How's that? So here's another weird thing we're talking about: the overpriced amps, they're not expensive amplifiers. Yep. Like the, like the, the, that's a gentle hundred watts to me, if that makes sense. <laughs> a gentle hundred watts. I love that. Yeah, I, love I mean that. it is it is loud as great okay uh jason that amp sounds great on smaller gigs and for recordings yeah sounds great on recordings i'll bet it does oh I'll yeah it absolutely amazing for, right for smaller gigs yeah yeah but we didn't I mean to we didn't mean to impugn jason's amplifier i did <laughs> well i've never been in the room with jason we are di long distance friends so yeah. i have to be gentler you yeah. know, gentle 100 watts. I have to be gentle with my friend. And, and the first gig he did with the uh, the, the transfer, the transformer blow. I told him, like, careful those transformers <laughs> blow. Because, okay, I didn't have the 84X. I had, well, here we go. Oh, here's my, all right, so this is my amp. You're going to get this out now? Stories. No, my amp stories. I um, I got a 19, what's the the 20 watt version, like the mini plexi, the, the, the 20 watt reissue head that they made. I forgot the name of the Marshall one. Okay. Sounded great. Uh, trans the first time that kind of came out hand wired, I got it a great deal at House of the Guitar House of Guitars in Rochester. You know, like I don't know how they would move some of those prices. It's like moving out the back door or something. Who knows? That's um, not how it came in, came in back door. The back exactly. Door. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. So it's great. And I'm playing on a gig and <laughs> just the transformer blew, and then I got it fixed. The power transformer, and then the output blew. At True Fire, I was recording with them. Man, this sounds good. <laughs> now <laughs> like, you're done. Gah! So that one was the input transformer. So all the original of that original run, the in, the transformers all blew, consistently. And I remember talking to Marshall like, "Yeah, we've we've had this. We've maybe heard like it was like this, <laughs> you know." So completely obvious that they're downplaying yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so then uh, Jason bought that amp. I'm like, careful, it's not between this year and your year because your transformer is going to blow. He's like, no, it seems fine. You know, right. it went. Yeah. So, Steve, Moore, Steve Moore said Origin Classic 20. I think, Steve, what you're yeah. talking about, the, the reissue that you had was the reissue 20-watt PA head, mm -hmm. the old 20-watt PA heads. The 20 watt PA head. head. And yeah. then they reissued the PA head that everybody had used mm -hmm. for small gigs back in the day. So that's what you're talking about. Yeah, right. and it yeah. sounded great. Now, I mean, I would say if you're going to get something like that, I would go for that one we were discussing earlier that Brett Papa just got the uh, the, Mar the, the classic. Yeah, the, the Studio the Plex, 20. Studio 20, yeah. which I've played, and I'm just like, man, this sounds great. And then I'm like, well, I would just want it because I just want I want it. You know, <laughs> but you would, it's not like you're going to, we talked earlier. You're not going to, I'm not going to gig, gig with it. Yeah. Right. I won't have the right, headroom. Right. I think, I right. think Greg Cock is using one, but he's also running it in combination with that other amp. His, well, amp. his signature amp. Yeah. So who yeah. knows? Cause it right. looks cool and says Marshall and you know, whatever, yeah. but, um, same reason you want one. Yeah. So it, <laughs> we uh, so, understand this. Right. Yeah. So, so with Jason, like, you know, you're saying the headroom, it all comes down to the kind of gig. Like if you're playing a straight blues gig, yeah, it'd be cool if it's a lower volume thing. Um, but then also it depends if you use any higher output, you know, it all, I, it all, my, my, so I got that. Then I got a, an 18 watt Marshall kind of thing, which was cool. Um, and then I did a few gigs with that and I was like, oh, there's just not enough headroom. And then there was prior to that, there was the Badger always thinking like, you know, you got to keep the volume down in New York. And I finally came to the conclusion that I, to solve all those problems, I have the louder power amp section to give me the headroom I need. Mm -hmm. And depending on the overdrive of the amplifier, I'm always maybe having on the edge of breaking up and I'm using pedals right. and it's just, that's the sound. It's the sound. It's so easy. I find it to be the easiest way to control everything at every given point in time. Yeah. And, you know, to answer your question, the other question is, so if someone's going to buy just one amp. For me, it's at least 40 watts. And as we said, so the Hot Rod series, those are loud. Mm -hmm. Those are loud, loud yeah. amps. Tons of clean room, clean right. headroom. Yeah. Whew. We got to wrap it up. I'm getting hungry. Me too. 
I don't want to get hangry on the on the stream. That would right, be Brazil. Not... Greg Martin's 100 watt Marshall sounds glorious in all the case. Yeah, but Greg's doing all sorts of stuff to <laughs> to to, to mitigate the vomit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like turning around. I think he's is he running two tubes? I can't remember what Greg says. All the speakers, you know, like he's you know he's making it work. He knows all the tricks. He knows all the tricks, and also right. like you know if you're talking about there's a, there's a different kind of stages. If you're playing a larger stage, you can get right. away with a lot right. of that. And doesn't play, Greg isn't isn't he famous for playing juniors as well? I know so, his old Marsh, yeah, and his his, yeah, uh, his and, Les Paul, and, right, right. But especially the the not the the single P ninety guitar, you're going to roll that way back. You're going to that's a, that's the greatest mm -hmm. dancing you know volume dancing thing there is. So right, I got a yeah, yeah. question here, then we kind of close it. Okay, seems a popular trend to plug into some board with uh, amp models uh, rather than use an actual amp. Would you ever do this? Uh, oh, we've talked about this a lot because yeah. we we just spent all this time with the stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not by choice. <laughs> well, um, and, and you said you, you, you do it right there where you are. Yep. You do it for recording, which yep. is how most of us live, you know, with a pair of monitors on our desk. I'm sitting in mm -hmm. front of where I sit and write. Yep. But, but if, the, if the question is, are you going to go out and gig? The answer is yep. no. Right. So I got some questions here, and I can answer these with experience. Um, yeah, well, the bad cat is it like it's a, that's like a, a Vox. So we're talking about a Vox AC30. It's not really 30. Whatever the case is, it's the frequencies. Those amps are massively huge and loud sounding. Right. So I say 40 watts, like an AC30. I like the, the amount of volume and headroom an AC30 can give you. So the matchless bad cat 30. To me, that's an AC30. Like sometimes the wattage of the amp doesn't really quite. Well, the bad cat 30, bad cat, and like, like other old Samson designs, the uh, like David's 30 watt amp hugely overbuilt transformers yeah so would you say so, it's, a it's a gentle 100 watts this is not a gentle 30 watts that's my point and a, yeah. and a you know like that that's the, the two rock the little one's not a gentle 30 watt 35 watts it's a really it's all loud. there yeah okay you i had a i had a dirty shirley i had the bigger one um mm -hmm. i did a bunch of gigs with it and i got completely buried so i sold it at 30 watts it was a 30 watt yeah, whatever the 40 watt or whatever the 40 watt the two six was it two al 34s i think it was six l sixes in that amp or something i can't remember and um david grissom used it when he played in town he bought he used my amp and he's like that sounds great but i can't i might like, get the headroom out of the amplifier yeah so a spectacular sounding amp i love the sound of that amplifier there's a frequency that's missing to the music that i play and the gigs that i did especially with another guitar player like when I was playing my Wagner many years ago, I did a gig with Angus Clark. He had his Plexi, and I had my Wagner uh, Shiva, and he decimated me. <laughs> <laughs> it was go. just like, where did the amp go? What a kind so, friend. Um, Such an old yeah, friend. Bill yeah. Shulkaitis. Yeah, Bill has my, uh, Bill is on here. He's the one who bought my Dirty Shirley. I nice. thought it was, it was a great amp. I love the sound of it, but on gigs, I just kept on getting buried. Like, yeah. I just didn't, you know what it was? I became as a, I started playing cleaner and cleaner, and I was missing the headroom. That's all it really comes You're down to. You're missing the dynamics, then, right? Yeah, and then the amp right. maxed out for the kind of music right. that I play. So, so you've become too sensitive, I am so a player. So very sensitive. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think on that note. <laughs> yeah, I think on that note we're good. All right, so everybody was here. Thanks to everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for Keith for joining me today for this this. Blah, blah, always, blah, blah. Talking about this stuff. Always this a is pleasure. a ton of fun. Um, Jason Lachlan, Tracy Farmer, he's chimed in. Bill. Um, also, yes, Mixing Major and Minor Pentatonic Masterclass. That is coming up this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you can't make it live, don't worry about it. Catch it on, on the playback. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to be talking about mixing major and minor pentatonic uh, scales and, and blues and in bluesy rock stuff. So Allman Brothers kind of thing to start off with and how you can use that in the blues. And um, it'll be a ton of fun. And, and thanks to Baby. Baby, yep. And Keith and I, don't forget, we have our Eric Clapton pack. Oh, yeah. Our tone and, pack. Um, right. right. Yeah. And we're, we're going to be doing more uh, tone packs in the future. It, it lets us scratch that producer itch. Um, yeah. yeah. That's fun. And I, I, it was very educational. It's a lot of fun. And it, and it lets you go down the total nerd you know, path. On, on these tones. And like you said, sometimes you find out what was originally used and then you dial something else and you, you realize that, yeah, when you dial in a particular tone on a record, it wasn't that amazing on the record, but in yeah. the context, it was perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, All right, thanks for having me, Chief. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. I'll mm. talk to you uh, later. And, okay. I'll um, talk to you later. So, you guys, thanks, everyone. How do I, how do I stop this? <laughs> <laughs> You're trapped. I'm going to dinner. <laughs> I'm going out for Chinese. I'm All out. right. I'll see you guys later. Thanks. <laughs> see you I don't know how to get out of here either. I do. I got it. All right. Okay. See you guys. Bye-bye. All right, bye.